Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm still visiting Nordic Computers here in Denmark. Nordic Computer is a big computer broker uh, specialized in server equipment and they've let me show some of their equipment to you guys. So I have picked a couple of different models on the in the warehouse and dragged them in here to show. So our special guest star today is this HP DL380 Generation 7. I have never seen this server. This is kind of a special server because this is the server that they would bring out to a customer that will, would have a dead server of this model. So it's not very nicely equipped. The server is with a system board and all the cables and stuff. But if you have a dead something else, well, you would have to bring that along. Otherwise, you could put this server in their data center and just move stuff from the old server and to the new server. But this is less work than swapping out the system board. But let's have a closer look at this Generation 7 of the HP DL380. The Generation 7 here looks very similar to the Generation 6. I have noticed there is this flip out that um, shows the serial number and the password for the ILU adapter. In, on this server there is an overview of how the system is doing right here. So there is um, activity on the network cards, power supplies over temperature, overheating-ish, and power cap. Uh, there is 18 DIMMs in this server, so they each have an LED that shows if they're good or bad. Mostly it shows up if they're bad. Then it has CPU or processor 1 and processor 2. AMP status, um, yeah, that's it. And it has six fans and they each have a, an LED as well. On this server, it has the old regular VGA connections right next to a couple of USB connections and a really nice beefy power on and off button. Then there's health status LED. How is the server doing? Well, it uh, shows up there. And it has the UID that you can press and it will light up on the back if um, you want to find this server in a rack and find it on the back. It has room for eight two and a half inch hard drives. These are just empty fillers to prevent the airflow to uh, for all going through there when there is nothing in it. Over here, I've removed the label that they have put on this for their spare parts. And just to reveal that it has a CD-ROM slash DVD drive multi-recorder, which is also rewritable. So I don't know who uses that. I have never used a rewritable disk in a server, but, but well, somebody must use it for something. So we have the release thinky and HP has branded it. HP Polyant DL380 Generation 7. So let's go around the back. Around the back, first we have a riser card here. That's half height. Uh, two slots available there. Over here we have three slots available in full height. And we have one more over here, also full height. So it has four full height PCI Express ports there plus the two half heights. On the bottom we have tools. It comes with a Tox. It's an kind of an Allen key but with Tox. Let's that's something to Tox about. A uh, finger screw release thing. Then it has four network cards. It has one here, network port one, network port two, three oh, network port one, network port two, network port three and four right next to the ILU adapter. Very dangerous because um, it's so easy to just pop in a network connection in there. And if you're not on the same VLAN as your ILU adapter, well, you are in for some trouble. Then we have a serial connection um, right here. And we have the old PC2 keyboard and mouse plugs. Um, that's okay. I have never seen this on this newer server before. I think this is the last model where they have this. I believe that generation 8 they got rid of that. I know that the IBM brands that I normally work with, they gave this up long ago. But well, HP has hold on to those for a bit longer. 
then we have the VGA connection over here and we have a couple of USB 2 connections and this is the ID button UID so if you press it on the front it will light up blue on the back and if you press it on the back it will light up on front then we have a couple of slots for power supplies and the very low end of these servers uh, are equipped with one power supply but as soon as you have two CPUs in the server well you usually have two power supplies and if it's an important enough system you will surely have redundance and have two power supplies in it so that's it and it weighs somewhere between 16 and 27 kilograms so if we go into the server here it has the normal lever here to open up and take the cover off on the inside of the cover there is a good explanation on well what everything is and how you do the most normal things there is how you uh, take in and out a cpu there is how to put in pci express ports and what everything is pci e2 and what everything is in on the back disk drives there is different models available this server is apparently available for two and a half inch and for three and a half inch drives there's an explanation of how the diagnostic panel here works system inside display leds awesome there are some fans there are some ram configuration down here something about how to install the dims what to do what not to do so awesome so if we start in the front we have the disk drives here and it does well it seems like it would be possible well it seems like it would be possible to have more disk drives over here on the bottom of this so probably that is available we might just see if that's uh, the case uh, we can see that uh, it does not show but there's a lot of empty space beneath the cd-rom drive here a lot of space there is not being taken up by anything empty space is not a normal thing in a server like this they usually find a way to fill it up but for the eight drives that are in the server there's a back plane here and it's connected with two connections that goes down to the back of the server um, and to get a better view of that we need to remove this piece of metal which is also the riser card it has some finger screws here on the back this is common or it has this in common with the generation 6 of this server which also have this system where you release some screws here and you pop up the riser card by pulling in these handles and the riser cards come up like that so yeah, cool it's missing a riser card here also it has an air buffler here um, that makes sure that the air from the fans here goes in the right places and just and don't just go out through the CPUs all of it or goes out through the RAM so there is a plastic thing here that divides the air from each fan blower and says this fan blower cools this RAM and goes over to the power supplies or cools something on top of here that's the room for the PCI Express card right here and that might be needing some air from this cooler this is the one that controls the air and it also tells you uh, what RAM channels you are messing with for each of the two CPUs and it has a battery here that goes over to the rate controller cache thing and that is usually battery backed up so here we have it next thing after the hard drive backplanes are the fans and these are as always hot pluggable so you can take out a fan and put it in while the server is in production right behind that is all the power conversion the power supplies makes some of the power and that power is transferred through the system board and over to these circuits over here where they are transformed down or up so you might have a whole lot of 12 volt coming in and then it goes down to the circuit board and then it's converted to a whole lot of 1.8 volts or 1.3 volts or whatever the CPU and the RAM uses you can see that there is some power conversion going on for these RAM blocks and the same thing over here 
there is power conversion for these RAM blocks. This server does not have any CPUs um, because it's a repair unit. But in here goes two Intel Xeon and those are the 5500 series or the 5600 series. So this server can take a pair of the Intel Xeon 5600 which um, they they go they go up to six cores with hyper threading and 3.46 gigahertz I think in the 5690. So a very fragile uh, CPU socket. So I will close that down so I don't drop anything in there. Down so. here we have the power for the backplane of the hard drives. That's right there. Right next to it is another block that can in some cases be the power for the backplanes over here but more regularly it's used to power the graphics card that you can normally put in the riser cards so i have done a video on where i put three graphics cards in a generation six of this server and i use a plug like this the next plug is what is that that's the diagnostics panel and then we have the CD-ROM drive and then we have a USB key for your hypervisor right there and there's a buzzer if there's something wrong with the server it will beep really annoyingly then we have the BIOS battery which is a CR2032 as usual and I need to charge my camera so here we have the PCI Express riser card socket that um, takes care of those two and if we look at the PCI Express well there's one missing over here that's for those two here the, the PCI Express riser card is missing over here but it has this one over here and it looks very similar um, the one that should be over here that supplies PCI to these two connections and to this one down here and the same thing goes for these two they supply for these two full length cards and a full length card over here so three full length card on this one and two half height and one full length on this card the missing card so cool that's the two sockets there then we have a cache controller slash raid controller extension here uh, there the raid controller is on the system board and you can get different models available it's a tiny little dim thing that you put in and it contains a lot of electronic this that you have here small chips lots of and that has the battery backup that goes over here um, and it has a little lithium ion battery encapsulated in there here it is HP branded and everything doesn't say how big it is but well it doesn't matter uh, these are usually supposed to be uh, keeping your data safe in the event of a power loss well the normal thing is 72 hours I'm not sure how it is with this particular one but the idea is that if the server is in the middle of doing something and power is lost and data has not been written from the rate controller cache card and out to the disks here well the data will be stored here for 72 hours being ready to be written to the disks as soon as power returns to the disk and the server next thing we have is the SD card slot which can also be used to store your hypervisor on this server is very regularly used with VMware ESXi and that can be stored on an SD card there or you can use the USB port down here which will take a USB stick actually very much like this one which is actually a USB stick for exactly that ESXi or an SD card just like these that will go into the server right there and you'll just pop that in and you're good to go better put those back we have the network chip here we have the two connections SAS connections that goes up to the disk backplane up here and otherwise we are running out of things back here there is not a whole lot there is a lot of weird plugs 
that is usually not used for anything. As this is the Intel Xeon 5600 series, you have uh, three memory channels per CPU. So, and there is room for three blocks in each of those three channels. So you have nine blocks of memory for each CPU. If you use all the blocks, well, the CPU, it goes down in memory speed. It goes from 1,333 megahertz down to 1,066 megahertz, which you very normally don't want. So, but if you occupy the first and the second slot of every bank, you will be able to run full speed on the memory in this server. The maximum amount of RAM that you can put in this server is, is a bit hard. If you occupy all the blocks, you can only put in 16 GB blocks in the server. If you occupy the first two slots in every memory channel, you can actually put in 32 GB blocks. And that's the maximum configuration for this server, which brings the server up to 384 GB of memory. So that was an overview of this HP server, the Polyant DL380 Generation 7. Uh, this server is widely available by now and um, is fairly good priced. This is one of the first servers that was widely used as a hypervisor, which means that servers like this are getting more and more expensive because you needed less and less servers to actually run your server environment. But I have seen that these are available out there and I'll try and see if I can link to some in the description below so you can go server hunting if HP is your brand. As the world's biggest Lenovo fan, I'll put this back on the shelf. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.